Welcome everybody to another edition of Calling All Devs, our relatively new now weekly Q&A program where we take questions submitted by you, the Star Citizen Backer, voted on by you, the Star Citizen Backer, asked by me, the Star Citizen Content Manager, and posed to our developers, the Star Citizen Developers. Yes, it's a joke I'm never going to get tired of. Let's just jump right into things, shall we? So for our first question, the first question voted on and submitted by backers, uh, we are calling, uh, who is one of the people who's become a, a uh, calling all devs all-star, Mr. Chad McKinney here in all Los Angeles studio. Chad, how you doing, man? Hey, man. Doing well. Welcome back. Good to be back. All right. So we are starting off with you. We've got a question here. Uh, one of the most voted on questions in, the, in our February thread. We put up a new thread every single month. Um, this rose to the top very quickly. When will persistence log in? What? Oh, wait, no. Okay. When will persistence log us into the same location where we logged out, like ships, outposts, stations, etc.? Yeah. Okay. So this is a bug that actually we knew about before even going to Evacati. This actually did work at one point, but okay. um, there were some changes. There's actually quite a few changes that. Uh, happen to persistence and the way that we handle persistent data throughout the 3.0 release. And um, it was just one of those bugs that we knew about, clearly identified, had repros and everything for it. We just didn't have uh, the time to dedicate to fix it. It was one of those things that we decided that it was OK to let slip for this particular release. And we are absolutely going to fix it for 3.1. Uh, we did release a follow-up patch in 3.0.1 that solved it in part. There was actually a large amount of persistent data regarding the player that wasn't getting sent to the game server whenever a player would log in. And it would make it to where there were certain persistent behaviors that wouldn't track across servers. Um, that has been fixed, but it doesn't completely fix this particular issue. So um, we just need to actually dedicate the time to it to actually investigate it and, and fully kill it off. But uh, yeah, this is, is something we've known about, and we're absolutely going to fix it for the next release. All right, so just, just to clarify, uh, it, it's actually not a feature we're waiting to implement. It's something that's supposed to be in now. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a bug, bug that bug. this doesn't happen. Um, both just like, um, like say you, you, whatever, signed out at Levski, you, you would expect you respawn in that Levski, but also the, the ship uh, spawning feature, our um, logging off feature that we added in that and certain ships, you can, you can log off in the middle of space and then actually re-log in and be back where you were in the middle of space. And so that is something that we worked on and was actually working. It was actually kind of a, a Rube Goldberg machine of, <laughs> of, of persistent data like to get this thing to come together. And we actually had it working, but then it broke, uh, unfortunately. But it, yeah, we'll, we'll get it working again. One of the perils of running a live game environment in the middle of game development. Yeah. Uh, I do want to. I do want to add one more thing, just just to cover your butt a little bit. You said <laughs> it'll definitely be in for three point one. I want to say that it, are, it is our intention to have it in. For it is definitely our intention to have yes. it in for three point one. But just like we didn't let us stop three yes. point from going out, we're not going to let it stop. That's 3 right. Uh, we'll so always identify what really has to be in the minimum viable product for the release. So if this ends up being cut again, it's not because we didn't know about it or it slipped through the cracks. It's because we felt like there was some other more critical features that we needed to give attention to. Always with the priorities. All right, Chad, thank you so much for your time. I'll let you get back to work. Oh, thanks, man. All right, bye. Bye. All right, thank you so much for that. So for our next call, um, well, I'm not going to call anybody for this one. Uh, the next question that has been submitted by you guys, the backers, and voted on by you is actually how are the mechanics for multiple character slots going to work? And I'm actually going to field that one myself for, an, for a couple of reasons. Um, one, we run these things, we make these shows, Calling All Devs, Reverse the Verse, uh, Around the Verse. We are doing this in the middle of active uh, game development. Uh, one of the challenges of that is that in the middle of active game development, uh, you are still developing things and one of the things you're developing are the answers to these questions now you'll see a lot of comments from chris roberts over the years on either 10 for the chairman or wingman's hanger or atb where he'll he'll he'll, he'll, he'll share ideas of how he wants uh that system to work uh, we've mentioned in the past um, that's a good use for multiple game packages basically you know every game package you have uh equates to a character slot and of course uh, then the possibility of selling additional character slots uh, these are still things that we are open to exploring uh, but right now um, there are no plans to 
implement a multiple character slot system in 2018. Uh, that's something that's a little further out on the schedule. So because it's a little further out in the schedule, uh, we don't have the locked down answers for that system now. Uh, it's simply a matter of priorities. So yeah, so there's basically nobody for me to call on that one. I didn't want to ignore it. I didn't want to just skip over. It's a good question. It comes up quite often. Uh, you guys submitted it and you voted it up. So I wanted to address it. Uh, this is just unfortunately uh, the only answer that's available for this. So for our next call, we are going back to the UK for a question about scanning. And uh, my favorite X-Wing compatriot, Mr. Will Maiden. Will, how you doing, man? Hey, Jared, how's it going? That's doing well. I'm, I'm much better. I'm uh, getting over pneumonia, turns out. Oh, it was pneumonia. I sounded pretty pneumonia. rough before. Yeah, no, I went to the I went to the doctor and was like, "Hey, you know, I, I'm not getting over this." And he goes, and he goes, "Oh, well, you got a bunch of fluid in your lung." And I'm like, "He goes, he goes, he goes yeah, but you're pretty much over it, over the pneumonia." I'm like, Wait, <laughs> I had pneumonia. He's like, "Yeah, you had pneumonia." Oh, well, I didn't. How much fluid in my lungs? Excuse I me. That I didn't ask. I didn't, I didn't think to ask that. Okay, so your question from the backers this week. Go. Scanning mechanics. <gasps> Are scanning mechanics beyond salvage in the work? So he doesn't want to know about scanning mechanics or salvage. He's like, yeah, there's going to be scanning for salvage. But he wants to know, beyond salvage, are scanning mechanics in the work? And if so, what patch are they planned for? <laughs> A, when <laughs> A when question. They, when they, question. They keep, they keep Just, trying. When questions to the left, please. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. Beyond salvage, absolutely. Scanning is its in the process at the moment we're getting the baseline of, of what scanning is. Kirk's team in LA are doing great work and just kind of getting that delivered. But if you don't want to know about how we scan other ships just in general. Uh, that, that, that's good. Throw it in there. Throw it in. He says he doesn't so, want to know, but I want to hear Well, it. no, but, I mean, we've got salvage, but that's different to just normal scanning anyway. So we've got your normal scanning, which is see a ship. I don't know who that is. I'm going to see what's inside kind of thing, which pirates will be using and which uh, everyone will be using. So which is, and we've got two kind of, all scanning is made up of two parts. We've got location and then we've got analysis. So you'll ping and you'll identify with the radar, so something's over there and that's worth my interest and so I'm going to go over there. And then when you get the thing that you want to, to know about, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll scan it and you'll analyze it and you'll get a readout of what's inside. And so that's kind of the fundamental of how all scanning is going to be. Mm -hmm. You locate and you analyze. So for salvage, even though you don't want to know about it, for salvage, you will locate derelicts and you'll scan it and you'll find out what metals it's made up of and how I can use this to strip it for parts. And then when you're, and so other things we're looking at in the near future will be mining um, that's coming through. And so for mining, we will be locating um, deposits of resources. I want to go over there to, to break up these asteroids or that field or whatever. And then when you get there, you can analyze these rocks, analyze the ground, analyze the asteroids and see, okay, this has got crud that I don't need. There's too much um, waste in here. Ah, this is a, a thick vein of gold or something like that. So, yeah, we'll, again, taking the same phrase, location and analysis. And that's, yeah, that's what we're looking at. But I can't really say when that's coming through, but that's where our heads are at the moment with, with both salvage and mining. Yeah, and just to just to tack on to the to the one question, I know we're we're having a little fun here. Uh, it's because the people who are developing these features and whatnot, they're not production, they're not responsible for the scheduling and stuff. They they, they do their they do their work and so on. so it's it's one of those reasons when we have the thing that submit your questions that says don't specify for different people for, for different person, only ask one question for a thing. It's the people that can tell us about a thing are usually not the people that can tell us the win of a thing that's different department. No, so, unfortunately, so I, I, no. Yeah, so I figure the thing that you want to know more about is how it's going to work anyway, because the answer to almost every one question is when it's ready. Yeah, so. but yeah, that's where these will be the first implementations of, of the system, so. Yes, all right. So thanks, Will. I'll let you get back to work. Nice one. Take it easy, mate. All right. Later. Bye. All right. Thank you so much, Will Maiden. Uh, for our next question, uh, <laughs> you know, we've got our ship shape show and we, we, we do ship information there, but people keep uh, submitting questions for calling all devs and you guys keep voting it. So we're going to we're going to we're going we're gonna to take a question for this. And for this one, I am calling uh, good friend Kirk Tomei here in our Los Angeles studio. Kirk, how you doing, my friend? Oh, hey, Jared. How's it going? Good. 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 Uh, thank you for taking the time to be on the show again. Sure, no problem. Uh, got a question for you. I'm pretty sure I already know the answer, but they voted it. I'm posing it to you. Uh, the question is simply, any news at all about the Banu Merchantman? 
Ah, uh, the merchantman. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so a little bit of bad news um, in, in that it's uh, effect, uh, unfortunately not on the active uh, ship development schedule for 2018. Uh, last year, we did commission uh, an external artist to do some concept art for us, which uh, was delivered and we approved. Um, and um, we're just uh, under-resourced at the moment to uh, be able to move it into the 2018 schedule. So as soon as uh, we get those resources uh, freed, freed up, um, we'll begin to schedule working on it and uh, get it uh, released to uh, the community as soon as we can. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm sure that uh, when we do uh, get those resources and um, freed up and uh, start working on it, that, that uh, you'll definitely inform the community about <laughs> when that's available. Yes, you can be sure the very first uh, ship shape when this happens will be me running around the camera. Like, it's happening! <laughs> so uh, obviously we're working on uh, as many ships as we can at the moment and, and we're just uh, booked up and uh, the um, since so many resources are required to uh, get uh, ships in the game. Um, just have everyone working at 100 percent capacity. Yeah. Uh, I want to do want to follow up on that. Uh, you mentioned that we that we uh, did do some outsource uh, concept work last year. Uh, we've actually shown that those images. Uh, you saw those images on around the verse last year when we did features on the Banu and the Banu uh, Defender. Uh, we wanted to flesh out more of the the Banu style guide when developing the Banu. So the Defender. So uh, you guys have seen everything that exists for the Banu Merchantman at this time. So. Uh, like, like like Kirk said, when when it's time on the development wheel comes up, you can be darn sh certain that uh, I'll be right there on on a on a ship shape telling you guys. So thank you so much, Kirk. Thank you for your time. Sure, no problem. All right, take care. Okay, and so for our last question of the show this week, uh, we have a question here uh, that's perfect for one of our community managers, actually. So I'm going to call lead community manager out of our Austin, Texas studio, Mr. Tyler Wicken. Tyler. You Hey, we you playing with the reclaimer? <laughs> sorry. Hi. Hey, Jared. Good to see you. Every time I call, you're playing with that fl flipping reclaimer. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. It's cooler than anything I have in the entire fan cave. I mean, I'm not purposely putting it in the frame to show that off to you or anything. It is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the reclaimer coming in Alpha 3.1. Yeah, okay. All right. So, nice plug. plug. Nice plug. <laughs> hey, that's what I do. I'm a, I'm, I'm a shill. I'm a shill. All right, so I have a question for you from the from the backers, uh, voted up on Spectrum. Uh, your question for this week is, why, 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 why do I have to go to Reddit, to Twitter, to Facebook to find official information that should have been posted on Spectrum? Okay, that's a good question. I'm surprised it wasn't about the Carrick in one way or another, but let's, let's... also tell me about the Carrick. It's, it's yeah, it's there. yeah, I, I was waiting for that bit. Um, okay, so um, that's a really good question. So one of the things we like to do with our communication style um, is to be adaptive to some degree. So what that means is. While Spectrum has a lot of good information, announcements, ask a dev, or even frequently developers hanging out in the live chats, you know, discussing mechanics or accepting the latest feedback, um, we also work to provide information on a variety of um, other platforms that our community uses as well. Now, the reason we do this is because everybody absorbs information in different ways. While one person may prefer a text post, another prefers a video, and another may prefer something more interactive, like a live stream. So what we try to do is utilize all the tools that we have in our belt to be as accommodating as possible um, for everyone in our community. And so what this allows is actually some really cool things like getting to send developers to community-ran events like BritisonCon, Con, um, Bar Citizens, um, getting to do a cool article in a magazine, just to really you know, reach everyone in our community in a variety. Oh, I just dropped the Buccaneer off the Reclaimer. He was in the middle of salvaging it. Here, hold that. Um, anyways, <laughs> anyways. Um, so yeah, we do a lot of cool things. Like for example, a lot of our developers will take the time to actually go on our community's podcasts um, and videos. Um, and so yeah, I mean, that's really what it comes down to is it's not that we don't use Spectrum. It's not that we don't use Facebook or Twitter. It's that we try to use a variety of, of ways to communicate. For example, um, a number of shows like this one. So information is everywhere, and we try to um, be accommodating. Yeah, and a lot of the information that you see on, on Twitter or Facebook are, are, is, is a repurposed information that, is, that was presented elsewhere, either in one of our videos or on a Spectrum post. And it, yeah, so it's it's it's... It's reaching out to as many people and as many different platforms as we can. And I think it's served us very well over the last couple of years. So 
Yeah. yeah. No. And, and, and of course, for anyone that's like, you don't spend time on Spectrum, you know, talk to Matt Sherman, Phantom of, 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 of Spectrum. Uh, I was about to say, chat. I mean, that's who comes to mind when it's, <laughs> as soon as you think about Spectrum chat. And Living up in the rafters of Spectrum, waiting waiting for somebody to say something and then rappelling down yep. and saying, ah, here's the information. And it's funny, you mentioned information coming from Reddit. Well, we're not actively posting information on Reddit. A lot of the information that you may see on Reddit comes from places like our Spectrum. videos, our streams. Matt Sherman, our, you know, on Spectrum. So yeah, yeah. Talk to talk to Will Maiden about. Yeah, I posted on Spectrum, but the the blow up before it happened on Reddit. So it, it, our community is such an important part of disseminating our message. Mm -hmm. You know, and and and, and a, lot, a lot of the stuff gets repurposed to all those things. So we, we use everything. We use everything in every way and every shape that we can. And I think we'll we'll continue to do that in the future because yeah. it served us so well. Now you said something about people showing up on on podcasts. I understand that you're working on something. Uh, to, to help facilitate that. Can we talk oh, about that? yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. I think now's a good time. Um, so in the past, we've had opportunities given to our developers and to CIG staff to appear on various YouTube videos or live streams for members of our community. Now, as our community continues to grow, so does the need for us to streamline this process. And so this is actually really exciting. So in the past, the way it's worked is um, people from our community would you know, tweet at us or send in a support ticket or try whichever avenue they could possibly get through to see if they could get somebody from CIG to appear on their show. Um, and what we've realized is that we, we love that we're getting invited to do these things. We want to do them more. So we're going to help facilitate an organized process to do just that. So coming soon, TM, um, to the website is something we've been working on, which is an invite a developer form. And what this basically is, is an opportunity for you to fill out a form that says, you know, hey, what's the name of your show? What are you guys all about? What's your scheduling like? Because obviously scheduling is super important. Our goal is for this process to not impact the game's development in any way. So much so that a lot of our developers um, are going to be doing this in their free time after hours just because they want to which is really cool um but in this form you'll also be able to request things like let's say that your live stream is going to be all about environment dart or procedural planet technology well you can actually put in the type of discipline that you're hoping to get from cig to appear on your show and we'll take that into consideration. Now, of course, as a disclaimer, I have to say, there's no guarantee that we're yes. going to be able to accommodate every single request that comes in. But I will say that our goal is to be more accommodating than we were before. This is going to help us by taking all the information, all the invitations, all the requests, being able to put it in one place for us to really evaluate how much can we do, how frequently can we do it, and for us just to make this process better so that we can get more involved and be more engaged with all of you. Yes, uh, um, thank you for putting that disclaimer in there. Of course, uh, always th the the highest priority has to be uh, their work on the game. Absolutely. Like that. But uh, but uh, no, I think I think it'll be I think it'll be a good step towards uh, to towards reaching even more communication platforms than yeah. we than we currently do now. So yeah. All right, man. Thank you. Push the reclaimer back away from the edge of the desk. I've watched you almost hit it like four times in the middle of this conversation. I <sighs> it's. Uh, or you could just send it to me. You can send it to me, and I will take care of it. I would take very good care of it. Jared, I'm sorry. I can't hear you over the sound of my reclaimer. All right. All right. Thanks for having me, Jared. Bye. <laughs> Bye. All right, and with that, that wraps up another episode of Calling All Devs. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, remember that you can submit your questions for consideration each and every week in the thread up on Spectrum, and don't forget to vote. Uh, that is the two-prong process. I say this every week. You got to submit the questions, and you got to vote on the questions, and then uh, uh, and then I'll find the developers that are available to answer. You know that. Which lets me let, let me let me add that there. If people are like, hey, you, you skipped that question. You know, it's all the way up at the top. Uh, there's not always a developer that's available to answer the question. It's it's a it's a it's a mix of things. I do my best, obviously. Um, just like uh, with today's show, with the question about the uh, the, 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 the 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 character slots, uh, there wasn't a developer for that right now because it's not an active development. So I do my best not to not to avoid it to give you the information that's available. But sometimes when I know there's a development a developer that's perfect for it, but they're not available this week, we'll put it off for another week but rest assured we will get to that question it's always a always a shell game of priority so for calling all devs i'm content manager for global video production jared huckabee and we'll see you next week everybody thank you for watching so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in star citizen and squadron 42's development please follow us on our social media channels see you soon